Just ignore them and they'll go away. Stick up for yourself. This has gone on for long enough. 2014, heads up in Hawke's Bay. There were 14 of us. We had to work together to create a show about bullying. Each of you are going to grab a chair and put it in the circle of go. And the boys and girls were from intermediate schools around Hawke's Bay. So they were year seven and eight. Yeah, a little bit younger than 2013, which meant the, the emphasis changed a little bit uh, in that the problems were different and the solutions were slightly different as well. Good. Now I don't have a chair. That's okay. I'm... I think laughter is very important. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, we're dealing with serious issues, but unless you can you know, relax and have a good laugh, and, and and we noticed that with the kids that they really started to relax and enjoy. Mm -hmm. okay. I reckon this time you'll get it. So the process began with with some um, scene work, with some freeze frames, image theatre we call it where they, they build some pictures and you take, you build language from that. Poetry featured a lot in mm. the devising. The, the poetry that we explored through the choral speaking and also to the, from their, their own poems that they were writing. Um, I've got, give up, put down, do the right thing, be who, be who you are, follow your dreams. Be different, not the same. You are who you are, never change. Well. The, the style of performance for this Heads Up 2014 was a series of, I guess, short vignettes that were, I guess, introduced by a couple of characters. And in our show, there were a couple of clowns who had these bags and unpacked their baggage, didn't they? So one of the clowns produced a, a painting that they had done and the other clown ridiculed it. So it, it immediately sets up this, this sense of being teased and, yeah. and the effect that it had because the clowns are very vulnerable. So they introduced uh, some of the messages we were trying to get across. Those messages were contained in, in one of the, the clown's bags. It was almost like hanging out the washing, wasn't it? Mm, mm, and the yeah. message was, was there for, for everyone to see. I think one of the other really important things that came out in the performance was noticing when, when something is going wrong. Mm. And in one of the segments we have a myriad of people moving around and just saying lines and it, it's like that they're, they're not realising that there is a problem. I'm busy at the moment. It's really noticing that people are being affected or hurt by the actions of others. Notice hurt means to me how people don't actually notice the hurt that people are feeling inside until harm is done. We've been very, very fortunate with this year's group because the kids are all very, very respectful of one another. So when they are workshopping and um, they are bringing their own experiences to life, they have been incredibly open about it. Well, what it means to me would have to be if you're insulting or hurting someone in any way, or making them feel down, then just stop it because what you're doing is not okay. Just stop it. The children were telling us that, you know, what, what their schools do do in terms of bullying and their perspectives on whether that's working or not. Our school you get a purple slip right. and you like pull it out and if you get like lots of them you like not like course. Cool. It goes into a folder. Right. Yeah. And you're not allowed to go to school for a couple of days and you get lots. Do you know of anyone that's like been on them without names or anything? Do you know of anyone that's been on them? Mm -hmm. And have they stopped bullying? No. So it doesn't doesn't work. Some of the bullying that has gone on for these children has been going on for a very long time and it's still continuing and despite what they have done and despite some of the interventions that some adults have taken, it's still going. When you do the signal to the teachers, um, you usually talk to them but and they have like a little talk with the bully but like they just keep on doing it they just think it's a joke and they just carry on like 
so they don't take it seriously. Yeah. Sick wise people means to me like if you're getting bullied and you're like feeling like you need some help, go to someone like older or you think you like know better. If there's one key message that I think the children um, would all agree on, it would be that when they go to an adult and they tell their story, um, what they're really saying is, we need your help. There was a section there um, that we call their simultaneous scenes where we had two scenes happening at the same time and people talking over the top of each other, but the language that was coming out was almost the same in each situation. Ali, come in. Sam. Has she done it before? Yes. Do you want to tell me about it? I guess I should have noticed. Yes. We got the kids to speak at the, precisely at the same time to highlight those, those parts of, that, of the dialogue mm. that, that were key to reinforcing some of the messages that we were getting, getting across that the clowns were, were helping to, mm. to bring to the, to the audience as well. Did that make it better? I don't, I don't know, know if there's an easy answer, but I'd like to help. I found tackling the issue of bullying with the children of Heads Up uh, to be really great. They were, they were all very open from the beginning. Uh, they'd all been chosen, especially by their schools, to be, to be part of this project, so they all knew how special it was for them to be there, and so they were all very, very keen. I met my old lover on the street last night. Talked to, uh, with the kids about some certain writing technique ideas, things about metaphor and, and how, to, how to show, not tell. And then I said to them, look, I want you to write me five different metaphors in relation to, to anything. So as green as a dragon, you know, something like that. As angry as a crazy rhino. That was a good one. We just wrote a whole bunch of stuff on some paper and then I took that away. Uh, oh, and I, I also asked them to, to tell me which ones they liked as, as a group, you know, oh, we like this one, this one, and yeah. this one. Stand your ground. I like that one. Don't lose that? who you are in the blur of the stars. Oh, it's very nice. And then I took those away, and we started uh, started compiling them into work okay, so into a bigger, bigger bigger piece, you know. Okay, so goes all about this. Give me a second. <clears throat> I know you're hurting now. The children responded very, very well to, to wanting to create some music for the show. But the difficult part came with, with teaching the whole lot of the children the song. And so at, at that point, there were ones who, who were a little bit more reserved. Um, but I kind of just let, there were ones who wanted to do certain stuff, you know, do a little bit of dance or whatever while they were doing things. And they all kind of naturally clumped together as well in their little groups. Push you around and it kind of worked really well. And, and the, the other kids who were a bit more, uh, you know, outgoing were very encouraging to the rest. So it was, it was a great group dynamic and they, they were able to kind of work it out themselves. <laughs> Something came up later in the piece um, when it all came together and I can't remember specifically what it was but they, 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 they talked about the bully and the way that, that uh, he might have been feeling, sorry, he slash she might have been feeling. He's cheeky. He's cheeky. It was very profound. I thought it was quite important that that is something that is also talked about when when we talk about bullying that it's not just about the victim it's also about the bully who himself is probably a victim of something if you take away all that his non-verbal and his body language and stuff deep down inside what do you think he's like pretty sweet he could be quite nice. To, to look at, you know, the deeper problem, to be able to empathise with, with the bully themselves uh, is quite an important thing. And kept coming back to this one story that we all seemed interested in. We are going to do some more investigating into our friend Sam that we haven't met. But we're going to do some stuff that will really tell us a little bit more. 
So we started with, with a bag, with a school bag. The pretext was the Sam's school bag. We need to have everybody's permission to do this because it's all about privacy. We are actually going to open Sam's bag and have a look at what's inside. In applied theatre, you use artefacts which, which kids then explore, they um, investigate and they discover and then they start to uh, infer about, you know, why is this in the bag and what's the significance of this and, and what, does it, what does it mean in relation to uh, this character. I didn't know if we were supposed to read it or not, but I did. Yeah. And it said Ryan. Yeah. Who's card? Uh, it says a reminder card. Oh yeah, a reminder card. Do you want have a bad memory? I think the most difficult aspect for me was in the workshop process, coaching children who haven't danced before. So it's more about the emotional impact of, of bullying, and there's no name, there's no, you know, there's no Sam, there's none of that. There is the bag, however, okay? And what, what the bag is going to signify and represent is the emotional integrity of the per of, of people. And for me, going right back to the beginning, just basic movement, rudimentary pedestrian, what we call pedestrian movement, and using that to great dramatic effect. It's not about the technique, it's about telling the story. And I think for me that was a great way to, to bring it back to grassroots. Let's try it again. It was interesting at first, you know, they were, they were terrified and um, tentative to approach the dance piece, which actually turned out to be more of a physical theatre piece, which is what we were aiming for. And then they went through this process of, oh, realisation. Oh, we get to contribute to this sort of thing. So it's not just someone teaching me how to dance. This is actually to, about telling the story and doing stuff that I love to do every day. And so it was using those skills. And then they came to own it. That gave them the confidence then to step up and own it. So Amy especially for, say, the central yeah, actor, right. where it's a very physical process that you go through. It's the physical violence of bullying that we examined in the, movements, in, the, in, the, in the movement piece. Him learning how to use his body to show the emotions, you know, his breathing, his stance, the way that he moves, the way that he falls to the floor, all those things, physical manifestations of that emotional trauma. And I think that was a really great thing for them to learn as well, is that you don't need words to tell a story. That situation with Sam came from uh, a series of freeze frames that one of the groups did. What are you doing? What are you that doing? That had a kid being teased by another and also had some bystanders mm. who Struggle. were involved. And then you'll start crying and you'll want your mummy. Want, want your, your mummy. The language that came out of that through the Image Theatre was that they didn't want to be involved. Here, I'll help you. Give us your glue stick. And one thing they said was, and it really it struck a chord, was, um, why are you making us do this? Um, right wrongs to me means that, like, say you're bullying someone and you can just, like, go fix it and you could do, like, the right thing and become friends. What it means to me is that when it, when you've done something wrong and you never meant to do it, you can always apologise to them. Well, some of the messages we tried to convey in the play, one of them in particular was cyberbullying. You know, someone sees an incident and it continues on Facebook or Instagram or... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it builds, it builds yeah. and builds and builds and it's that accumulation. It's gone on all day and night. The thing with cyberbullying as it happens 24-7, Freeze. you can't walk away from it. Sure, you can turn it off, but it's still going on. I helped Sam that day because I felt sorry for him. What's wrong with that? So it was really important to make sure that these were the kids' words in the play and that it came from some basis of, of their, their own experience. And the children who haven't had bullying experiences um, have witnessed things and seen things and they really have developed an, an empathy towards one another so they begin to see it from different perspectives. What it means to me is that if someone's bullying you on cyber, like on the internet or face to face, is that 
if you don't give if you don't if you reply that's just gonna make them wanna carry on the conversation. So just choose to walk away. We rehearsed during school time as well as outside of school time. Mm, and that was a huge change and had a big effect because what it what it meant was that schools had to become involved. What what's other other people's reactions at the beginning of school? I told this girl I hit her and she was like begging me to come like right at the end. And she's like, I can replace Autumn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amy, what did I say to you? My friends want to come because they don't want to do school work. But I said I said to them that I'm still doing work. We took a break from rehearsals to promote the show. Right, out of all these colours, what do you like best? Purple. Purple. Let's go for purple. The photos Beautiful. were about being yourself and being oh, proud of who you were. The beautiful Karanga Gardens was our backdrop. We scrubbed up pretty well. I think it was the first time I filmed one of the final rehearsals and finally see it from the audience perspective and it was, it, it was great because I, I realised that suddenly all those pieces fit in and all the hard work and all those those troubles that those kids had gone to, they had worked really hard to bring it together as a team. And it showed. And that was the important thing, is that it showed. And it was that moment where <gasps> it works. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Finally, it was time to take the show on the road. The first time there was that unknown quality of what, what's all this about. Like, we but um, you, you guys you know, based on the success of the top of 2014, no, 2013, and so, um, yeah, the schools were really keen to come on board, and hopefully that'll happen again next year. There's three schools, Jim, and that's probably half of them are Havelock, half of them are H and I, half of them, oh wait, that's three halves. That's two. That's, <laughs> that's impossible. What message would you like to give students about bullying, what would you say? Um, I'd probably say that um, there's other people who've been bullied before, so they have, have been experienced, not, not just you, so yeah. That you're not alone and that bullying is not, not okay. okay. Cars, guys, when you come out. There were expectations on how to behave like a visiting theatre troupe. At each school, we had to set up, rehearse, test the equipment, and adjust to a new stage. It was a big school, and the stage was so much bigger than our rehearsal space. We're looking forward to your show. I know you've been working hard on it. It's a real good message. And you can cut your teeth on my kids. I know you're going to really blow them out of the water. So what do they say in your industry? Break a leg. Nervous? Stay in here, darling. So folks, they're sitting right at the very back. Right at the very back of the bleach for seeing to really protect. Nerves were running high backstage for the first show. When the lights went down, I don't know about anyone else, but my stomach lurched. What are you doing? What are you doing? And friends begin to follow you. The scars and bullies fade. Our first show was definitely the hardest. But we got through it and the relief was huge when the applause came at the end. They actually clapped. So, you were actually quite nervous to start off with, weren't you? Oh, what? <laughs> <laughs> the camera's shy now. I'm not. Yeah. I'm so happy to be in heads up. Oh, my, my jersey like, oh, on. My jersey <laughs> on. My jersey on. So, so no, seriously, how did you find your first time singing in the front of that audience? That was scary. Right. Yeah? That was really scary. She died. Scary. I made a mistake. I'm like, like whoa. I did, I did I walked down, high. I saw them, and I'm like, whoa. There were two kids specifically who I think were, were quite affected by <laughs> bullying and stuff like that. And the day before, we visited both of the schools of, of the kids and performed the piece. I remember one of the kids was, was very worried about, about doing this and performing in front of his bully, really. We performed the show, bully was in the audience, and you know, obviously there's been a lot of emotion and stuff before that leading up to it and going like, oh God, what's gonna happen, you know? 
and then finishing that and then the kids coming up to me afterwards I, I imagine they went to other people as well but they came up to me and said look like my bully came up to me afterwards and and said good job you know and, and then and then gave me a hug and I was like oh man <laughs> so many feels we had worked really hard with um, that person to to try and stop some really ingrained bullying that was going on so that was really a fantastic moment and I just hope that um, by the conclusion after that bully has seen the performance and everything that hopefully going into the final year of intermediate that bully will stop. That what we did really had an impact on on the kids like themselves but also on the bully because that was the point that we could create this piece that we could show to children or you know adults whoever and that could really resonate with them and they could reflect on the way that they're acting and the way the thing that they're doing and go wow maybe maybe I'm not dealing with this stuff in an appropriate way and and it seems like that's kind of something that happened. Well being in this program for me has actually strengthened me to stand up to the bully and um, to actually not listen to them because it's wasting my positive energy and um, a friend told me that it's like a bubble and you just like a, the negative things bounces out and you can let the positive things in. I'd like to think that they've learnt that they can always go to someone else for help. They don't have to do it alone. It's not just about the children having the skills to deal with it, it's about everyone taking a responsibility. So the show got stronger and stronger, and so did we. I swear I live. There is a chance that we've got another show on Friday at 11 o'clock. OK, so is that good? Yep. All good? Yep. Um, which means an 11 o'clock show and, uh, at St Mary's and a 1 o'clock show then at Heratonga. What do you think? Really exciting. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, do you want to go or do you not want to go? <laughs> I do because, like, I want people to see how I feel about the bully teasing me and let her know how it affects me and because I've been getting teased because doing the special workshops. You need to walk with purpose. If you get in front of someone, oops, that's right, change direction. Oh, yep, that's cool. You keep walking, you do not stop. Well, we've got the, uh, the public show on tonight and we're doing a quick rehearsal because uh, Martin can't be with us tonight, so Timothy is stepping in at the last moment. From the first moment of meeting people, I was amazed in terms of Timothy. Timothy has come on board. He's not really into acting or anything like that. So five minutes they've written the poem and the music for it. Yeah. <laughs> he turns out to be an amazing actor. Um, he seems to be very talented and he's very, very confident. Thanks, daughters, the people who think they are helped. Because they are just acting like some of Yeah. It's up wrong. It's surprising because his interests are in completely different areas of sports and things like that. So. He's, yeah, kind of surprised me, but they all have in their own individual ways. He might turn against me if I didn't. I got the bruises to prove it. I climb up onto the skirt. All good. We're going to do another run through straight away. Ouch. Let's do it again. Yeah, it's been a big week, but um, I think the kids are going to really lift tonight. I mean, they did a fantastic performance today at Taradale. They're just growing and growing with confidence. So I think they'll really rise to the occasion. I mean, this venue and, and family and friends, so I'm feeling very confident. Right, do it again. When you're performing in a show, you keep developing, you keep progressing as the show goes on. Hey Max, bet you can't toss this bag on the roof. No, don't. Tonight is really a very, very special night. You dedicate this performance to someone in the audience, okay? 
It might be, uh, it could be a family member, it could be a friend, but just personally, to yourself, dedicate it and you are doing this performance for them. The experience was amazing. The opportunity to be part of something that had such a bold message was incredible. I think people were really moved by what we relayed to them and that some of them thought twice about their actions. We have to keep passing these messages on. I think it's an important thing we need to, we need to talk more about and, and this is a great step in the right direction. Heads up.